Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Well, glad you chose to be in the house of the Lord on this Labor Day weekend. Wow. We've got a few missing today, and we're glad that you are here. And uh, those that are traveling, pray that they'll have a great travel and safety and all that. Amen. But uh, we're going to have a good time today, and uh, God's, God's been good. How many is glad to owe you one? How many glad the Razorbacks won? Sounds pretty evenly in here. We don't care about the rest. Amen. So, um, Oklahoma State, maybe one or two in here, right? But uh, Now, we always have fun with that. Dee's not here, so I had to kind of follow Dee on that, uh, talking about the first week of sports. But how many today is a Jesus fan? Have a little problem here. I got some fans in the house. I got some fans. I heard them. Now, now we're going to rewind because we got to go back to Wednesday night service because I've been teaching on fans or followers. So that's why it was really light. I know that y'all clapped real lightly, like I'm not a fan. But how many followers of Jesus I got in the house? Okay, okay. So I've been teaching on Wednesday night that book called Fan or Follower, and man, I tell you, it'll mess you up. Amen. Well, we're going to just get kick off today with this, uh, with what's going on at TPF. There's a lot going on. Uh, let me tell you, ladies, it's busy. Men, it's busy time, September, October. Lots of events are going on. So uh, just uh, sit back, watch, put it down on your calendar, mark it, say, I'm going to be there and be a part of that. But just take a look at what's happening. Jackie Hill Perry, and I am here to invite you and welcome you to study the book of Jude with me. Jude is one of the books of the Bible that people kind of forget exist, but it's super relevant for us in our day and age. I talk to a lot of people who are wondering how to love their neighbor who disagrees with them, how to talk to their friend who is wrestling with some things, how to defend particular truths and doctrines of the scriptures. And Jude actually has a lot of answers for many of our questions. To neglect the whole gospel, as in to leave out the parts that might make somebody feel some type of way, is to remove the parts of the gospel that actually make it good news. Grace isn't amazing unless you understood that you don't deserve it. God's love don't seem as deep and as wide and as long if you don't recognize the fact that God loved you way before you loved him. Our walk through Jude will only be seven sessions. I think it'll be good. I think we'll learn a lot about God and mercy and his gospel and how to defend the truths of the faith. And so I pray that you would come alongside of me to walk through this beautiful and glorious book so that we can learn how to contend for the faith together.
let's worship him and the beauty of his holiness today. Today's about declarations throughout worship. Psalms 30 verse 4 in the message says, All you saints, sing your hearts out to God. Thank him to his face. You ready to thank him to his face this morning?
morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Come on.
seen the righteous forsaken Or see you begging bread Cause he won't
If he's great to you, let's sing it again. Come on, sing it. Come on. Just worship him. Come on. Father, we thank you for your greatness today. There's too many to name how great you are to us. But God, today we worship you. And we do say thank you. And we do say thank you again, God. We can't say it enough. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your greatness, God. Lord, we bow ourselves before you today in your presence. Asking you today, God. Lord, to do what you may in our lives each and every day, not just today. God, we thank you. Thank you for salvation today. We thank you for that perfect plan that you set and designed. And God, I thank you for the plan that you have for each and every life in this room. It's a perfect plan, God. Many times in our life, we look at our plans and we think, wow, what a mess. It's because we got involved, God. But Lord, when you're involved, how that plan looks so good. How that plan looks so great. And God, today, if we can just take our eyes off of us, circumstances and things around us, and look at that plan that you have for us, how perfect it is. God, thank you today for provision. Thank you today, God, for every person in this room. And we celebrate your name. We celebrate you above all things in this place. And we give you honor in Jesus' name. And everybody in this room, would you say with me? Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise, will you? Amen. I think we can sing it one more time. What do you think? Let's all sing it one more time. Come on. Come on, everybody. He is raising church one day in your life. You know this. Come on. Come on. Sing it out. Celebrate that name, Jesus. Come on, amen. Celebrate him today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, singers, musicians. If you'll remain where you are, amen. You'll understand in a minute, so just hang in there. We just... Um, thankful. Y'all can be seated if you'd like, amen. We don't know what we're doing. No. But uh, so glad that God is a... Amazing God. Amen. Amen. And uh, he's always on the throne, always making intercession for each and every one of us. Amen. And so today uh, we have our first Sunday offering coming up. Amen. Come on. I know you say, I thought I didn't seen that pass. Yeah, that was tithes and offering. If you're here today, if y'all don't mind putting that up for me, the future offering and we change it up a little bit I thank Crystal for changing this with us and uh, getting a picture of the actual future on the actual poster and uh, looks really good and uh, so we just want you today to if you if you hadn't seen that it's out on the wall as you walk out on the left you can take a look every time you see it I want you to say thank you Lord for that building you say why are you thanking Lord for a building because we need room amen 
we need space. Uh, you know, this thing is just, we know timing, God's in it, God's on it, and we're not worrying. We know it's on His perfect moment. And so today I want to, want to speak into our lives today and, and speak a, a very positive thing. God has a plan, and it's right before us. Now we just got to set it in motion by faith. Amen? And this giving that you do every first Sunday, you know, it, you say, well, is it enough? Are we trying to get a down payment? What are we doing with this? And I've been asked that a few times. And so I want to help you out just a little bit this morning. This, this offering goes into a very special place offering. And it's set aside for things that we need to do along the way. Pay architects and things like that that we've already done out of that giving. And so we do just small projects out of this. We will, you know, the Lord may give us a loan himself. Somebody may just feel led to just write the check. Come on, amen. The plan that we have may not be the plan that he's got. Amen. The plan we got was go to the bank. He may already have the check sitting and waiting for us. Amen. So we'll just depend on what God says. But if we go with our plan, we'll get a loan from the bank. Hey, you know what? We did that with the land. And within just a few months, God paid it completely off. Amen. Less than a year. Amen. God's good. And so... If God can do a land payment off, He can do a building payoff. Amen? Amen? But we're believing for this. And I wanted to put it in front of you so you could visualize and see it. Many times we walk past it out there. But I want you to start walking by it, looking at it. I want you to start getting it in your spirit more and more. The more time we do that, the more greater faith each one of us are going to have as we give this first Sunday offering. Amen? So before we give this first Sunday offering this morning, I've asked Christy Savage. Y'all might know her to do a special song for us today. And, uh, and Christy's traveling with the Parnell family now. And she, uh, she was supposed to be here next week, but my uncle decided to book a book. A, yeah, we won't talk about that. He's online probably, and that's good. But since she can't be here for our anniversary Sunday next week, and they, and they are booked all the way, I think, through November now. So since she won't be here for the next few months, we wanted to go ahead and get her up here sing a sing a song, a special song for us today. So where's she at? Make her way up. Would you give Christy a hand? Come on, amen. So most of you that Christy spent, Christy was our, she led worship here for 13 years. And uh, she, uh, God has just blessed us with a great team. Amen. Give, give our praise team a hand, would you? Amen. You're doing amazing. Amen. I'm enjoying it. But uh, we will recognize all of our, from beginning of, of, the, of the service, of this starting to this ministry, next Sunday will be that Sunday, and everybody will be here next Sunday because we're having lunch after. And you heard it first right here. Amen. Pastor said it first. So no one else can say that, all right? If Fibbe says, oh, they'll be here next week because we're having lunch, Pastor already said it. You don't need to say it. Amen. So, hey, I'm glad they're going to be here, right? Amen. 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 Be people we hadn't seen in a year. Amen. So we're happy. We're thrilled about that. Amen. I am, really. You say, you don't sound like a pastor. I am, all right? Uh, yo, if you don't know me, welcome. Amen. So we're happy, though, next Sunday, right after service, we'll go to Gentry Park, as we always do, and celebrate our 14th year of ministry. Amen. That's amazing. Amen. Amen. Nathan, I'll tell the story next week a little bit more in depth, but Nathan's in the house, man, and, and uh, we're glad to have Nathan and Martha and, uh, back in the house here for a time that God has, and uh, I tell you, it's just, uh, we'll tell a little bit of the story of the years of when it was almost at a point that I almost said, I'm done. It was a lot of work, guys. Them first five years was a lot of work. We, we, we plowed, we plowed the seed and we seen people come, we seen people go. But then about that, yeah. 2016, about eight years in, we started seeing people began to plant. And we watched it begin to grow. I'm so thankful I didn't give up at five years. Amen. So if you're waiting for something today, don't give up. Because God's just right on the edge of bringing it through. Amen. So as they take up our offering this morning, 
Christy and them are going to sing and bless you with a special song. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all worship with me today, okay? I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I feel sing of the goodness of God. the goodness 
of God, and I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God's good, isn't he? Amen. I believe we, you know, honor is a big thing. Amen. And he honored those that have been faithful through the years. Amen. And I'm thankful for the faithfulness that she showed here at TPF all those years. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Give her a hand. Amen. Give her a hand today. Thank you. And uh, man, I tell you what, God's been so good to us over the years. And uh, next Sunday we'll talk, well, I'll get a little more of that. I, I want to share just a little bit, but the thing is I, I have today in my heart and uh, it's so good good to see so many faces here today and some new faces here today I want you as TPF family help our new family that's in the house today would you give them a hand and let them know they're welcome here today amen and uh, we're thankful you're here if this is your first time don't make it your last your family now amen your family now and uh I, I was saying, you know, that uh, we're one of those family members that you, where you want us or not, you got us. And I got thinking about that and I thought, you know what? That's not a really good statement. Because we're the family member you've been looking for. <laughs> I, I got convicted about that, so I quit saying it. And uh, I, I just changed it just today. So we're that family you've been looking for. Amen. And... Uh, I, I just, oh man, I can just stay in this moment and just enjoy it for a little while, amen. But let's get the word to you for just a little while. I've got a whole, I've got an hour and 15 minutes, so who knows, right? Come on, amen. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for this word that we're about to open. I ask you, God, for the wisdom. I ask you, God, today for Lord, the anointed word is already anointed, but God, I ask you to anoint me, the vessel that you have chosen today, to speak this word. And Father, I pray it challenges hearts, challenges our life, also makes a change in our lives. Let us recognize who we are in you, God. And Father, that is the things that, God, you begin to speak to me throughout these last few weeks about this sermon parts that I have set in motion. And Father, I believe today, God, that the Holy Spirit is about to speak to our hearts. Give us some revelation, but also give us some things to stand on and to be who we are in you. And Father, I just ask you to bless this house today. Open every ear, open every heart, open every person to receive the word of God today. And not just receive it, but that it be planted and that it be guarded, God, today with every part in our lives that we can do, that we walk in the word. We not just be hearers only, but be doers of the word, Lord. And we thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, I was going to jump past this. I taught last week on, on being chosen and what we were chosen to be. That's how I titled last week. Today I want to title it, You Are Royal Priesthood. I want you to just help me out a little bit this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, You Are Royalty. Now, now let's just get really biblical and look at your neighbor and say, You Are Royal priesthood. Look at your other neighbor and say, what does that mean? Yeah. That's why we're going to teach it this morning. Amen. But I, 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 as you read this scripture in 1 Peter 2, 9, he says, but you. Everybody say me. me. But you and I are chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. I taught that last Sunday. Today is, it says that we are a royal priesthood. Then it goes on to talk about a holy nation, his own special people. In the King James, it says peculiar people. And that got taken out of context for a lot of years, amen. But that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his what? Marvelous light. Today we think of this word royalty. Royalty is a big word for me. And, 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 and when you look at how 
that you and I see royalty today and we think about people that are famous, maybe they roll out the red carpet for them or, or we think about people that have a name that, that when people hear that name, they think, oh wow, that's somebody that's important. That's somebody that's great. We have great people in our, in our United States. We have great people across the world. We have a lot of people that are royalty. They, they have a name and they, they carry that. Some carry well, some don't. But we think of this word royalty as being something to imagine maybe even a king. When you look up the word royal and you study it out through Old Testament to the New Testament, it breaks down royalty, breaks down to be a king. So when you think about royalty, we think about kings, maybe queens. But today I want you to really get focused on king. We're not trying to be, you know, of any, any kind of, you know, leaving any race, leaving any minority, anybody out. The king, the kingship is important because in the scripture, I'll show you in a few minutes, that God himself even called us all that. And when you look at this word royal priesthood, there's so much in it that you and I have to really understand to grasp what it means to us. So when we came into Christ, how many is glad when your day you got saved? Amen? Amen? And you believed in Jesus Christ. He then at that moment, that moment that you gave your life to Jesus and you became born again, you stepped into the, the family of God and you right then became royalty, all right? And you became the royalty that God has said we are. In Revelation 5, verse 9 and verse 10, it, it's got a lot of scripture here. And I want to take a few parts of this, but I want to read it to you. As they sing a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll, open its seals, for you were slain. And you redeemed us to God by what? Everybody say, by his blood. I want you to get that. And it clearly states, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And verse 10 says, and have made us. Everybody say made us. Yes. Made us what? Kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. And I want you to really grasp this king and priest to our God. There's a lot more in this passage that I want you to really know too. But I want you to grasp this part. Because if you are merely king alone, then you would just be called royal. But not priesthood. But if you were priest alone, you would not be called royal. Giving the scripture in 1 Peter 2, 9, he said that you and I are royal priesthood. We are both king and priest in God. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. I'm trying to walk you into this, all right? There's a lot to take in. Why would you and I want to be both king and priest? And what benefit of having these titles mean anything to me in 2022. A king was able, a king was able to make authoritative degrees. They were able to take the word of God and use it with authority. Are y'all listening to me? If you go back and look at Daniel and you look in the Old Testament, you study Daniel. Daniel, the, the king made a degree that said, you cannot pray and you cannot this. And it was signed. Anytime a king in the Old Testament made an authoritative degree, it was done. Are y'all still with me? The priest held a whole different office. The priest held the right to offer sacrifices and to apply the blood of the sacrifice, which was a privilege that was not given to kings. So again, pastor, what does this mean for us? I'm glad you asked. If you were simply one or the other, king or priest, then you would be quite limited as a believer. How many know as a believer we're not limited? How many know through Jesus Christ we're not limited? How many through the blood of Jesus Christ we're not limited? Amen. There's still power in the blood of Jesus. Anybody here understand what I'm talking about? There is still power in the blood of Jesus. And, and there is still authority in this word. Amen. I don't care what person says there ain't authority in this. There's still authority in this word. Amen. I still believe in the authoritative degree of the word of God. Amen. And, and a royal or king along, you couldn't speak with the authority of the word of God. Just, just as royalty. And as just priest or priesthood alone. 
You don't have the right to apply the blood of the sacrifice. Jesus did not merely make one of us one or the other. He made us both. Somebody say he made us both. You know why? Because God has given us primary, if you will, tools or weapons for overcoming the power of the enemy in our life. Amen. I don't know if you understand the scripture in Revelation 12, 11, and it's got a lot to it as well, but there's an important part, and they overcame him. Who was him? That is Satan. Everybody say Satan. Satan. They overcame him by how? We miss this sometimes because we usually quote it like this, and they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and their testimony. That's not what it says. It says the word of their testimony. See, words have power. There's life and the death in the power of every one of our tongue. Amen? If you speak word, there's power. If you speak <laughs> no word, it's death. Come on, amen? But when I speak to you today, I speak to you from the word of God. I show you from the word of God that he wants us to be overcomers against the enemy that is against us. That's tried his best to, to dis distort and take us and turn us this way or that way. But I'm here today to tell you by the power of the blood of the lamb and by the word of God and my testimony. I tell you, I'm going to overcoming. Are you overcoming today? Come on. Amen. I don't mean to preach so fast, but anyway, it's good. Amen. When Jesus made us royal priesthood, he was not simply giving us a title, but he was equipping us for the rights that we could use both the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb so that we can overcome the enemies in our life. I don't know about you, but you may be more perfect than I am. But there, I tell you what, the enemy don't just, let me, let me rewind. If the enemy's not been, you know, picking around and trying to get you to look at something else, I'm telling you right now, you may want to check where you are with God. Come on, amen. Number two, I want to tell you that I've had the enemy sneak around, try to sneak in the mind, the heart. Come on. Anybody know the mind is a big playground for his if you give it to him? Come on. How many know this mind can think things that ain't even real? We put our mind to thought sometimes. We've allowed our minds to get off. Oh, did you see how Michael looked at me? Did you see how Cameron looked at me? I wonder why they looked at me that way. Jeff gave me that look. He barely shook my hand. He didn't even hug me this morning. I, I'm just telling you, you know, I can walk around with my mind, and I can let my mind do some talking. Hello? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to ask you a question. Is your mind doing your talking, or your words of the Spirit doing some talking? Because see, inside of us, uh, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, but sometimes our mind... I ain't going, I'm going to get off that just for a minute. As a king, as a king, you and I speak the word. How many know we're supposed to speak the word? And as a priest, we are supposed to apply the blood. No force of evil can ever overpower us when we speak the word and apply the blood. Many times we speak the word, we don't apply the blood. Boy, it's quiet in here. It's good. I ask for some of the things I say all the time. My boy, I said that one just then. As a result, when you come before God, when you become before God, you are welcome to enter directly into the holiest place with the access of a priest and the boldness of a king. In the Old Testament, according to the Old Testament, the Holy of Holies was covered by a veil. If you know anything about it. And no one was allowed to enter except the high priest. And even he would only enter once a year to offer the blood sacrifice and incense. In Hebrews 10, 3, and 4, it says, But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins Every year, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away our sins. How many is reminded of your sins sometime? Then who's talking to you because it ain't Jesus? I snuck you in that one, didn't I? But 
it ain't, if, if you are reminded, you wake up every day and go, whoo, that sin, man, whoop, that sin, and whoop, that sin. Now, I'm not saying that you don't keep a back thought not to do it again. Come on, amen. Because he told, he told a woman that, you know, had committed adultery. He, she walked in there, and, and, and all the religious people had her there before Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, <laughs> I don't find anything here. I, I want, and, and they all left. He said, you without stone, you without sin, cast the first stone. You without stone. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> you without sin, cast the first stone. Everybody say that with me. You without sin, cast the first stone. We're always willing to cast a stone, but we don't want to talk about ours. But see, here's the thing. The enemy loves to bring up what Jesus has already forgiven us for. People love to bring up stuff in our lives that Jesus already forgave us for. <laughs> See, the bulls and the goats and the priests went to do the sacrifice. It's not enough because every year they were reminded again of their sins. I'm so glad that I don't have to go again and again and again and again and again. But hey, I go to Jesus and Jesus said, I wash you white as snow. Amen. What sin? That's a good hashtag. What sin? Because that sin's been forgiven. Amen. The death of Christ put an end to the old covenant. The Levitical priesthood evidenced by the the rending of the temple veil. Hebrews 10, 11, and 12. You ought to read this chapter. I ain't going to read it all to you. And every priest stand ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices. Which can never take away sins. But this man. But this man. Everybody say, but Jesus. Jesus. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins. For how long? For how long? He sat down at the right hand of God. But as priests once offered other kinds of sacrifices in the temple. So it's clear that from God, he had chosen us to offer us today, to, for us to offer up spiritual sacrifices because he called us the priesthood, the royal priesthood, the king priest. That's who we are. He called us that. All right. Are you still with me? And he said that to God, through Jesus Christ, he made access for all of us. How do we have access? I'm going to help you today. Because I, I feel that he didn't just call us royal priesthood just to be writing something in 1 Peter 2, 9. Well, I can't think of anything else. Let's write royal priesthood. That sounds good. There's a reason it's in Scripture. There's a reason that it's in this verse. There's a reason that he said you are and I am. He didn't just leave us out and say, well, you could be. He said you are. If you are a believer, you are chosen generation. If you are a believer, you are royal priesthood. Amen. What does it mean? I'm going to get there. Matthew 27, 51 says, And then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two. I like this part. From top to bottom. And the earth shook or the earth quaked. And the rocks were split. This is all happening while Jesus is dying for our sins. He's the perfect sacrifice on the cross. And he is dying for our sins. He is dying for our sins. And the blood is being shed. Everything is rolling down the, the, the Calvary uh, hill, if you will, looking at it. And, and the place of the skull, the Bible says. And there he was, the perfect sacrifice. The perfect lamb of God. Hanging there on a tree for all of us. And then you and I can't even give a little bit of sacrifice of praise. Goodness, I want to shout a little bit. Can I run this way? Camera, stay with me this morning. But I want to help you today because here's what I'm here to tell you. The perfect sacrifice was made. We got a spiritual sacrifice of praise. There's a special sacrifice of bringing yourself and your family before God. And saying, God, thank you for the protection around my family. Come on, amen. How many thankful for the protection around your family? Well, you don't know my family. Well, still protect them, God. Come on, amen. 
But see, the veil, the temple was torn in two. The Bible says the earth quaked, the rocks were split. Then you jump into Hebrews back again, sorry. But therefore, brothers, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Hello, am I talking to some priests in the house? Nobody, one person over here, I got a priest. Anybody else a priest? Let me ask you this. How many of the priesthood do I have? You say, I don't have any. I'm just, I'm just Dwayne Driggers. I, I ain't got nothing. Let me tell you, you are royalty. You are the priesthood of God. Amen. You are kings and priests of him. And he give all of us the right, not a priest that I got to go to and confess my sins in a stinking booth. Oh, you know what I've done this week? Got any passes for that? <laughs> Only the Catholics understand that in the building. <laughs> We're non-denomination. We got all of you. Amen. <laughs> But I'm here today to tell you the thing is, is, it don't matter what your background is, there's still one word, there's still one Jesus, there's still one. Come on, are you hearing me today, amen? And the thing is, is that he said, I died for your sins, yes. I died also that you might have life and life more abundantly, yes. But I also, I also, when I died, the veil was torn from the top to the bottom that you would no longer have to go get a priest, go offer sin for your sacrifice. What? a year but anytime man it's available to walk into the holies of holies into my presence into my glory and see who I am amen because he loves us and he wants to fellowship with us amen oh my my calm down calm down from a Baptist friends <laughs> Hebrews 4 16 says let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace everybody say come boldly that, here's how most come. Jesus, please, if it's your will. <laughs> Therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. I, I don't know if we understand this word boldly. I get pretty bold up here. Sometimes that anointing hits me because I'm not like this outside. Amen? <laughs> boldly. How many understand boldly? We walk in boldly. We walk in with authority. Hello? Because I'm a king and I'm a priest. Amen? I can walk into the holies of holies boldly to the throne of grace and not go, oh, I'm sorry, God, I didn't mean to disturb you. You know what he says when I show up at the throne of grace? Son, how you doing? How y'all doing today? Come on. Amen. How many know we have fellowship with God and he wants to have fellowship with you? Amen. He said, having boldness to enter the holiest by how? No other than the blood of Jesus. Oh, my, my. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace. How many is glad you found grace? <laughs> now, let me help you with grace. Because Paul had the same question come up. Paul started talking about grace. Paul started teaching on grace. And he said, so they went to Paul and said, hey, Paul, here are you writing about grace. Yeah, you heard right. Well, got a question for you. Does that give me a license to speed? I mean, to sin? And does that give me a license to sin? And Paul answered and he said, in the King James, he said, King James, he said, God forbid. But in the New King James, he said, what in the world are you talking about? A license to sin? Do you know what Jesus did for you and you want to play with his grace? You know what he went through to give you grace and you want to play with it? Hey, it's just a thought. But how many know that we obtain mercy? Ha, I'm glad for mercy, amen? Mercy come running after me, man, I'll tell you. I've needed mercy a few times in my life. Anybody need mercy? Anybody need grace? Anybody had any time of need? 
We have every right, though. Here's the thing. We have every right. Don't any, let anyone tell you any different. We have the right as king and priest, as royal priesthood, to enter into the holy of holy. We have the right to the throne of grace. Well, what's it do for me, pastor? I just told you that he'll give you grace and mercy in time of need. With every right that you and I have, we have the boldness and we have this authority as a king to speak this word. Speak this word. You know how Jesus, when he was tempted, he had fasted all them days. The spirit led him into the wilderness. He came out of the wilderness and he was tempted by who? No other. Satan himself. Jesus was the son of God. And Jesus being who he was, we look at it and go, well, Jesus just, you know, he just. No, he was in like man form. Are you still with me? And he had just went through 40 days of fasting and we don't even get a meal missed. Now, Jennifer, now I tell you, my wife misses a lot of meals. Amen. I don't know if it's fasting or just working fast. I don't know. But. I'm going to call it fasting to get out of trouble. All right, can I do that? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that wisdom. Amen. But I want you to know today that this right here, we, we walk in and we see Jesus at a point of his, and his ministry. And all of a sudden, his ministry is about to go take off. And, and then, you know, we see this at a time. And he's, he's seeking the Father. He's talking to the Father. He's doing what the Father says do and all these things. And he gets before the Satan. And Satan comes to him and says, hey, I can do that for you. I can give you this. I can give you that over there. And I can give you that over here. Man, we can make this work. Uh, you and I, you know, we buddy-buddy. We got things happening. No, no, Satan, we ain't buddy-buddy. <laughs> Jesus looked at him and he said it 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 you know what Jesus was doing he was using the authority of this word that he inspired many great men of the Holy Spirit to write to us you know we got some of the best words standing right in front of us and we sit back and go I don't know what to do about this situation it's right here amen quit looking for the answers through all kinds of different avenues it's right here look at your neighbor and say it's in the Bible it's right there. It's right before you. All you got to do is start speaking the word. Amen. Quit speaking other things. Many of us, we speak all kinds of things, but this word has power. Yes, you may speak it and nothing happened, but don't mean ain't nothing happening. When I speak the word, because I am royal, I am a king, I have the right to speak the word of God with authority. Somebody say with me, I'm a king. I'm royal. I have a right to speak the word. <laughs> to apply the blood of Jesus though, at priest, as a priesthood, we have the right. To apply the blood of Jesus to every area of our life. Many times we have, we have failed to look at this. Because if you study the Old Testament. You look at it. It's always a shadow of things to come. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament gives us a shadow of what grace looked like. What mercy looked like. What forgiveness was going to look like. What, the, what it should really be. And so as you think about applying the blood. We go back all the way to Moses. And we look at where the, he, the blood was put over the doorpost. Didn't anybody know this story? Raise your hand. Wave at me. Amen. Okay. There's a few of you. So, G, so Moses actually applied the blood over the doorpost. And they said, if, the, if we see the, the death angel come to take the firstborn, and said, hey, if we see the blood over the doorpost, it'll pass by you. So I'm asking a question today. How many, how many are saved in this house? Y'all ain't very confident. Let me ask you again. How many are you saved in this house? How many got the blood of Jesus flowing through your veins? If you got the blood of Jesus flowing through your veins, your doorpost is already covered. It was a shadow of what to come. No, you're not, but I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. Are y'all listening to me? 
I don't know if you understand this, man, like I understand it, but I tell you what, it makes me a little excited. I had a hard time putting it all down because I wanted to put a lot more in, amen? But I'm trying to make it simple for you. When you accept Jesus Christ, the blood was now applied. It's around you. But what if you got family that's not yet there? As a priest in a priesthood, a priest had the right to take the sacrifice. I have the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb living in me. Go. I have the blood of Jesus living. Are y'all still with me? Watch this. Watch this here. Because all of a sudden, now it gives me the right and degree to pray the protection around my family. Well, what if? Well, what if not? What if, yes, that God give us the authority as royal priesthood to stand in the gap and plead the blood. God, they can only go so far. Satan can only come so far. Are y'all hearing with me? Amen. The blood can only, the bloodline says, I, I got into a little bit last week about drawing the sand. And, you know, we always said, I draw that dirt line. I got that sand line. You ain't crossing. You got the bully wanting to fight or you the bully wanting to fight somebody, whichever it is. But there's a bully called Satan. And you know what? There's a bloodline. And that bloodline stops right here. Now, I have to learn to apply the blood around my family, my friends. Come on, y'all with me? Those that don't know Jesus yet, oh, y'all ain't listening to me. <laughs> when we daily learn to plead the blood of Jesus, how many want to learn to plead? You know what the word plead means? It don't mean to please God, do it. It means to apply it. Speak the word of God. God, I speak over, I speak over Gary's life. Gary, Gary's blood bought, all right, by the way. But I speak over Gary's life by the word of God, by the authority that you've given me, Lord. And you being the perfect sacrifice, the blood that runs through me. God, I pray that blood of protection around Gary. God, every single part of his body. I speak, I speak the power and I plead, I apply, however you want to say it, the blood. Yes. I receive that. And Gary says, I receive that. Now, most people are going to say, what are you applying blood around me for? I'm not saying get weird and crazy. Don't be fruit loops. Amen. But what I am telling you is in your private time, God, I pray the blood of Jesus around my kids. I pray the blood of Jesus around my grandkids. I plead the blood of Jesus around my home. I plead the blood of Jesus around my family. Are y'all still with me today? How many priests I got in the house? I got any priesthoods here. Amen. I got any roles here. I got anybody that knows how to speak the word of God. When you speak the word, you apply the blood that's already flowing through you, you know that you already protected. Come on, amen. amen. Whew. That was a lot to get out. As royalty, you and I have a position and divine purpose in this generation. Do you believe there's a generation that needs the blood applied? Amen. We've been chosen. We've been chosen. God has had a plan since day one. If there's one thing we can learn today, is this, is God uses people to carry all of this plans out. See, we get to be part of the story. God has given every one of us this authority over the enemy as well as weapons to use against his lies. How many know he's the father of all lies? Let me say it one more time. How many know Satan is the father of all lies? All lies. The Bible tells us God prepared us in advance to accomplish and simply need to be willing to walk in His plan. God has given every one of us that royalty, priesthood, that royal priesthood over the enemy as well as weapons to use against Him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, Angel, if you'll come on back, we're, we're, we're there. Because I, I want to get to this closed part. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5 says this, for though we walk in the flesh. How many know we still all walk in the flesh? But he said we do not war according to the flesh. There's another passage and, and, and we'll stay there. Go ahead and stay there. There's another passage that says that we are not fighting flesh and blood. But in this war we're fighting against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And a lot of people just read that and go, oh, we, 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 yeah, okay. I want to tell you something. All them things I said are real. 
It's real. Darkness is all around us. Darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. It's all around us. But he made me a king. He made me a priest. He made you a king. He made you a priest. He made us royal priesthood. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. If you're fighting flesh and blood, you're fighting wrong. Because this is your first weapon. It's a sword. This is your first weapon. It's a sword. They're not carnal. But mighty in God. For what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down. I have watched, I've been in ministry a long time (laughs) because I started when I was really young. I was 23 years old when I started pastoring. You've heard this story a thousand times. But over, them, over these years, and even after my seven years sabbatical that I took, the strongholds that the enemy, just because I get to preach on Sunday and I'm the pastor, don't mean I don't have anything going on. I don't have anything happening in my life. I never have to have warfare. I never have to have any. Pastor looks like he's got it just all together all the time. I'm glad I fooled you. Because I don't have it all together. But I have it all together in Jesus. I have it all together in this word. I'm glad pastor's got all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but all the answers in his word. Warfare. It's not carnal. We spend so much time fighting the wrong things. We are kings and priests. We have access to. To the throne of grace, mercy and grace. To any need that we have in our life. He said, I'll give you grace. He said to pull down these strongholds. I don't know if you really understand a stronghold. But it's something that's got. I'll make it in good Oklahoma term for you. It's something that's got very good strength. And it's got a hold on you. Where you can't operate the way you need to operate. He said first let's start with this. Cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Cast down the argument. Because people love to argue this. Isn't it funny they argue this but they won't argue their own faith. They'll find argument in the word of God. and they'll Well I don't believe that. Well, don't. No one made you. I can't help that. I believe a whole word. I believe from Genesis to Revelation. I believe the Bible says to rightly divide this word and not cause division, but cause unity. Amen of the faith. Come on, are you still with me? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing in every what? Everybody say that with me. Every thought. Because some of y'all had some thoughts here today. Some of y'all have allowed the enemy maybe to play in your thoughts today. Well, I'm not good enough. I'm not this and I'm not that. Yes, you are because Jesus said you was. Amen. Jesus already said you was. He loved you. Amen. Before we loved him, he said right here, every thought into captivity to what? The obedience of Christ. So when we obey Him and we get in the obedience of Christ, we find ourselves bringing every thought into captivity. Bringing every single thought. Man, if I have a thought about, oh, that or them or that back over there. Bring it into captivity. Get the Word. Start speaking. God, clean my mind. Because the Bible says, be not transformed. Be, be, Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind. The only way we're going to live in true transformation and true royal priesthood is that we renew our mind daily in this word. If your mind is being renewed by anything else, you're missing. You're missing some of your weapons. I want to encourage you today. 
Let's think of it this way. Who am I? You are royalty. There are, I said it in the beginning, there are families of famous people, celebrities. They carry their family name. You go back to good old Sam Walton. Well, does this fall into spiritual things? I'm going to help you. Sam Walton was a guy that I, I owned a store in Jay, Oklahoma way years back. And Sam Walton was known in Jay, Oklahoma more than he was in Bentonville, Arkansas. They love him in Jay. You know where they really loved him? Was at Lake Uchi. He fished Lake Uchi all the time. Sam Walton was at Lake Uchi all the time. He would pull up in his old pickup. He would pull up with his clothes that he didn't have. That looked like he didn't have nothing to his name. And Sam Walton would get out and fish with whoever on the banks. And it would amaze people because Sam Walton fishes at Lake Uchi. And he drives an old beat up pickup. You know what? It ain't about what you drive. It ain't about what you wear. It ain't about how you look or think you look. It ain't about your family history. There's only one family history that matters. And it's the history you got with Jesus. Amen. So when you look at me, don't look at the Driggers family. Don't look at any of the other family. But look at this family. Look at the royal priesthood family. Look at the family that I've been brought into. I was brought into this family. Because one day I accepted Jesus as Lord of my life. And he said, you are family. Come on, amen. And with that family name. With that family name, I have something to be proud of. It's not, not where you live. It's not any of those things. The enemy knows who you belong to though. The enemy knows who you belong to. He knows you either have God's Holy Spirit living within you. And he knows that God has a plan. He don't know the plan because the devil cannot look ahead. He only knows what you spit out of your mouth. I heard, heard Jesse DePlantis one time say, and excuse me if your family has ever fought this ugly disease, but it's an ugly disease. But he said sometime in the spirit, he said, Satan, he forgets everything. He does. It's only when you open your mouth he remembers. We remind the devil too much of stuff in our life. We don't remind him enough of this. We don't remind him enough of the blood that's applied in my life. Amen. We remind him too much of what we did wrong or how bad we were or what people think about me or this or that. But let me tell you something. We are in a family that we've been forgiven and that we are loved this morning. And God has a plan for us. Satan knows he has a plan. He don't know what it is, but God does. And if we listen to God and Holy Spirit, we know what that plan is too. Come on. Amen. amen. Let's step into that plan today. Would you stand across this building today, Father? We love you today. We thank you, God, for your word. As it sets a challenge in us today, we are part of the family. We are royalty. We are priesthood. God, today, take us, use us as royal priesthood. And Father, I tried to deliver it to the best of my ability today. And God, if I could simplify this in any way, I want to help every person in this room. Speak the word. And be thankful for the blood that's around you and protecting you each and every day. Thank God that you have access to the mercy and the grace that you need and I need in my life. Every day that I live. Father, I'm thankful for it today. I'm thankful for it today. Holy Spirit, right now. Holy Spirit right now just for a minute if every eye would just be closed I normally don't do this but I feel like it right now feel this in my spirit just close your eyes for a minute and I want you to look down deep we did this a little bit last week but God I want you to search us I want you to look down deep in us I want you to see in us God I want you to look into the royal priesthood side of us today I want you to challenge us God to look at ourselves. 
Or to look at ourselves today. God, as we lo- open our eyes, do we see us speaking the word? Do, us, do we see that, that blood that's been applied? Do we really, really use that? Or we just kind of live day by day? God, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, speak to every heart in this room right now. If you're here today, in this room, This is not every Sunday I do this, but I feel like it doing it today. I feel this, I'm telling you. It may be one person, it may be nobody, but I feel something strong in this room right now. If you're here today, and that blood has not been applied, you are not a believer. You're not a Christian. You're not that person that's accepted Jesus as Lord of your life. And right now, you say, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus. I want that blood applied in my life. Would you lift your hand right now? Is there anyone here? Lift your hand right now and say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my life. I'm not going to call you out, but let me tell you something. You cannot stand before God and say, I never was offered an opportunity because I'm giving you that offer right now. You can't stand before Jesus and and, and tell him a good lie because God knows the truth. And right now in this room, if if your heart's not right with God, I would do everything in you to say, Pastor, pray for me. Come on, who is it in this room? Anybody? Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone? Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. I thank you for every person saved. God, I cannot, I don't know people's hearts. Only you do, God. And I thank you that people are saved. And Lord, if they didn't raise their hand, I want to pray for them anyway in this room because I know what I feel. Father, in the name of Jesus, I apply the blood to protect them until they come to the day of salvation. I pray for a protection hand around them, God. I pray, God, that you would be there before them, convict them, set in motion, God, right now. Lord, in this room, they're not going to walk out of this room because in this room right here, Lord, you are Lord and you are King of kings. And Lord, today we stand in the authority of the Word of God and we apply that blood over lives today in this room until they come to the knowledge of you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> until they come to the knowledge of you, Jesus. We thank you for it. Now, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need to use the Word more. Raise your hand. I have my hand lifted. I ain't going to be denying anything I want to use the word more amen how many here would say with me now pastor (laughs) I need to let that blood become true in my life amen I got my hand lifted on the other side I want that blood to be shed around my life my family I want protection amen every day thank you God today thank you for your word thank you for the blood today a salvation of hope joy and peace father Now let us worship together in this room. Come on. I think y'all know that. I didn't even take it there. Go ahead.
How many is thankful for that blood? Amen. I want to pray today. I, I continue to just ask God how to close here today. And I want to be obedient. And uh, I, know there's, I know there's some people I, I know that um, are going through some things in their life. You have some needs in your life today. And um, whether it be sickness or whether it be just life in general. Um, I know there's, there's people struggling with different things. Um, I say this very general. But if you're struggling in any area. See, the blood of Jesus didn't just come to save us. But he said, by his stripes, we were healed. And, and the, the thing is today, I, I'm thankful for that healing. I'm thankful for that blood, that stripe he took. But also, I believe there's people here that need a touch in your life. And that blood is applied for that too. Because you have a time of need. And you need that grace. You need that mercy to show up. So right now, not asking any individual what it is. But if you have a need, whether it be sickness, whether it be life in general, whether it be just, I'm going to leave an etc. there, okay? Because I could name all kinds of things. But I don't want to miss what the Spirit's trying to do. If you have that, I want you to hold your hand up right now. I want you to look around right now. Just look around. Open your eyes open. Just look around. You got your hand up. Hold it up. Look around at somebody beside you, behind you, around you. You're not the only one. And that's the way the devil wants you to believe. Amen. He wants you to think you're the only one. So right now I want you to say, hey devil. I'm not the only one. But you know what devil? This is your last day. This is your last moment. To tell me that lie. Come on. In the name of Jesus. I receive mercy. I receive grace. I receive healing. And God, I receive whatever I need in my life right now. Come on, give him some praise in this room and thank him for it. Come on, thank him for it today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You say, you didn't pray a long enough prayer. Well, if you ever read Jesus' prayer, he said, be healed and rise up and take your bed. Amen. That's it. You're waiting for a long prayer. You're, you're, you're in some kind of other way. Come on, amen. Sometimes we pray too many prayers and not the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Speak the word. I'm healed. Speak the word. I'm free. Speak the word. I have grace. Speak the word. I have mercy. I am free in Jesus. Father, we love you today. We thank you for this wonderful, wonderful day you've given us to share your word. Share in song. And Father, we ask today that God, we don't walk out of here. God, without hope, but with hope. Not without victory, but with victory. We walk out of here today saying, I am a royal priesthood. And I stand in it by the word of a living God. And we thank you, God, today. Those lives that are changed, those lives that have been made whole, those lives that are free, we thank you for what you've done in this service. I can't see with my physical eye. But in my spirit, I know there's been victory happening throughout this service. And God, I give you praise for that today. In Jesus' name. Everybody, as loud as you can, give Jesus a praise. Come on, amen. Come on, give him a praise.